Alan Gow, always good to talk to you as we near the halfway point of the season. Uh, Alton Park sort of shook up the championship battle just a bit. Uh, the racing there became a little robust. Uh, how do you reflect on the, the weekend's activity at Alton? It, it seems to be, it seems that every year we have one race meeting where it seems to kick off. And it's, it wasn't just our races, it was all the support races. Um, I'm putting it down to the fact that they had a four week or five week break and, um, and, and they forgot you know, some manners on the, on the racetrack. So hopefully that won't happen again. Is there ever any need to, to read the Riot Act in a situation like this? Uh, we always do. Um, but but they, also, they also, after that sort of event, uh, usually get their invoices from the teams to show the damage bill and that tends to concentrate their minds a little bit too. Certainly would do. Uh, the other exciting thing on the horizon apart from uh, the way this championship battle is developing is uh, uh, we're nearing a very interesting point in the development uh, of the hybrid project. Uh, now just remind everyone uh, exactly what that is as it, as, as it comes on stream in 2022. Well, the, the hybrid, uh, as you say, comes on stream for everyone in, in, in 2022. And it's a hybrid which is, which is as well as the normal engine and transmission system, it's a hybrid system which will give the drivers an amount of power, they, extra power they can use throughout a race. Um, and quite how much we use, we're still in the final developments of it, but um, usually around about 15 seconds of power. Uh, and that'll give them another 10% power boost every time they use it. So a driver can use it for, for defending, attacking, the whole lot. So, so it is not pushed to pass as in Formula One and it, and well, it is... In Formula One you're a bit of a sitting duck because in, when you use the DRS in Formula One you can't do anything about it. The, the guy behind pushes the button and passes you and there's nothing you can do about it. With our system there is something you can do about it. Um, so it's a matter of strategy as to when you use, use the, uh, the push to pass because as I said you can equally use it to defend or you may not choose to, to defend it on that lap or that corner or that exit and, and choose to get him back in the next one. So there's more strategy involved than just pressing a button and, and being a sitting duck, the other driver being a sitting, a sitting duck. Now, there is a thought that the development race car may be seen in race action uh, at the Silverstone meeting next month. How would that work and how important is that to the project? Yeah, look, it's part of it's a part of our development cycle for the project. So, you know, the, the car has already done about a season and a half's worth of running, um, and and importantly, with no mechanical failures or anything like that. So, all the components that are in the car have been in the car since we first built it, and so it's important for us to to, to put it through a, a race meeting cycle um, to make sure that. Uh, it, for one, for everyone to see how it works and for the, for the public and the TV audience to see how it works, um, but also to put the car through that sort of, that sort of cycle. So um, Andy Jordan will, will drive it. Um, it'll qualify the same as all the other cars qualify, but it won't start in, in the position it qualifies because we don't want to upset the, the championship contenders and the normal race runners. So it'll set a, it'll set a, a grid time, um, but it won't start from that grid position. It'll start from the pit lane and uh, people will be able to see the, the, the performance of the car in relation to the other cars. Yeah, should take pole position because this is going to be a quick car, isn't it? Uh, there'd be something wrong if it didn't take pole position because it has another 10% you know, more power than the other cars available to it at certain times on the track. So I'd be surprised if it didn't take pole position. But, but honestly, having said that, we're not out to, for ultimate lap times with that car. We're out there to do a whole cycle of the race meeting if it gets pole, fine. If it doesn't get pole, not a problem. Don't forget that the chassis that we're using in that car is not like these race cars where they're being highly developed every weekend and highly tuned every weekend. You know, it's, it'll be a much more standard setup than, than all the other race cars out there. But, uh, uh, you know, its ultimate lap times are not that important. What's important is to, to demonstrate how the vehicle is going to work and, uh, and, and how it works in a race situation against other cars. It's a pretty exciting prospect for 2022. So. Yeah, absolutely. Looking really, really looking forward to it. And uh, you know, it's a new era for the BTCC. OK, and tell everyone else if they see it coming in the rearview mirror to give it a bit of room. Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers, Alan. Thank All you. the best. Have Thanks, a good Steve. weekend. Cheers. Bye-bye.